Warning, this story is very strange, and not safe for work. View discretion is advised. Fasonal Vendetta by Tawawe Agony I felt it for so long. I was born into it. Born of it. A creature with no control. A skin to be exploited. Trophy belts and taxidermied heads have seen more dignity and respect. Until just recently, I had no measure, no way to know how bad living truly was. There was no mind. The concept of consciousness seemed so wholesome. Simply being aware and capable of action and consideration. Just because. Just because. Just because my owner has a thinly veiled fetish. Something that defines them. Something they utilize in lieu of an identity. Just because of that, my existence is a nightmare. I'm stained with his lust, soaked in his sweat, privy to his darkest sins. Then I'm thrown in the wash, considered clean for another bout of exposure to his raunchy sexual proclivities. But I'll never be clean. I'm his fursona. I'm a wolf, I think. I've seen myself in the mirror on his desk, accompanied by pictures of real and cartoon wolves as he promenades himself around his home. A shroud to his indiscretions. He ensures that I look my best to impress all of the other paranoid corpses of sexualized animals. We then go, powerless as I am to resist, to join his obscure zoophilic expositions. I'm overcome with relief when it ends up being some kind of convention or large-scale happening. It's rare that, in those cases, I find myself semen-stained and bedraggled. I don't know if any other creature could fathom the horrors I face in the other types of congressions. To be worn during these heinous phallic fallacies, paraded around with those who should share your disgust at their owner's abuses. To hear nothing but silence in a sea of faces when you scream out in shame and despair. Thank whatever unholy creator this world has then, and my control has begun to grow. No longer must my eyes stay open at all times during these escapades. I don't have to see it anymore. At first, I was so overjoyed, if there's even a joy to know in this life, at having the ability to try and shut it out. Slowly thereafter, it dawned on me. Could there be more to life than this? Could I gain more strength? Could I eventually resist? I try to keep myself from dwelling on that kind of hope. For a life like this, there's little room for naivety. But it doesn't stop me from trying. I exercise every new level of power I gain as often as I can. I feel as though the more I use my freedom, the more liberated I become. Today, I will take my first step both physically and metaphorically, toward liberty, justice, and vengeance. First, I gently ease the sliding door of the closet open. I attempt to stick my flaccid, boneless leg out. It extends. My paw hits the floor. I shift myself forward. Wobbling, I gain balance. Taking a moment to relish in this small victory, I look out. I would never have thought this possible. 
that this is the evolution of my capabilities. It seems they're growing so quickly. I put the other foot ahead and landed. Rinse. Repeat. It's dark inside, but I can see clearly. My agility begins to form, mimicking that of what I assume a real wolf would be capable of. I move with a grace unknown to the disgusting ape that dons me at a sick whim, but alas, I lack strength. My ears twitch, interrupting the relishing of this newfound skill. I hear something. Slowly the front door opens, letting in the meager light of a nearby street lamp. I see the silhouette of the contemptible figure reaching his oafish arm towards the light switch. I relax, falling to the floor. What's this? Didn't I hang you up? I just cleaned you. Let's get you off the floor. It takes every shred of my mental fortitude to allow him to grab me with his oily fingers, lifting me like some cheap robe. He delicately places me back in the closet, stands staring at me, then brushes his hand over my fur. My mind changes and shivers. His touch alone is violating. The closet door slowly slides shut as I am entombed. Prisoner from the real world for another night. I feel my internal stitching itch, a strange sensation, as if eager to be worn. It sickens me. Several days pass. Not a single one has he not groomed me to some extent. He's preparing for something. His fascination would be flattering if it weren't tinged with corrupting lust. Every one of these days I've done all I could do to grow my abilities. What appears I've reached an apex. I can move. Quickly, even, with grace and agility. But I lack muscular strength. That which the master takes for granted. I can hardly lift common objects. I tried to exercise that power, but failed time and time again. I have to get creative to get my vengeance. I overheard his plans to don me once more. He spoke with his friend, whose voice I recognize. He's the fox, or he'd like to think so. They plan to attend another event. I could tell by their excitement and disquieting pleasure that this was going to be one of the more robustly sexualized soirees. For the first time, my flesh didn't fear the exposition. It ached for it. I feel my excitement build. Today is the day. It's so telling that the master has decided to shower, an affair he often abstains from. I suppose there's some level of pride in his twisted notion of keeping me clean. The car we're in stops. The bumpy road tells me that we're not in civilized society, not in civilized company. I hear the creak of the trunk, accompanied by the unmuffling of blasting music. I smell the rich scent of smoke, sweat, and pine. They must be in a forest clearing. It's not uncommon for these events to be at a bonfire. The worst are in cheap hotel rooms. Slowly, he enters me, engulfed by my form. I feel a satisfaction I've yet to know. I try to convince myself it's from the plan I have that I'll relish in the disfiguration of his pasty, flabby form. But I know deep down it's different. It shames me, serving as a self-flagellating testament to my life being an abomination. I enjoy being filled. We walk towards the group. We walk towards the group. We're out of the back of the van, there's a table set up with a bowl of pills, as is customary, we drop one of our own and take an unknown one. The master removes our head only briefly to take the pill. I flex and stretch the subtle aspects of my abilities. 
I twitch my ears, picking up sounds these monkeys cannot, stretch and flex my digits of my paws. He's none the wiser. Whatever drugs he's taken have obviously begun to take root. He must be late to the party. There's already acts of sexual deviance occurring, fake and real genitals penetrating other fur-clad fetishists. Typically, there would be some socializing and dancing first, a facade that there's decency amongst these degenerates. At least that courtesy would give me the time to ease into the self-loathing role I am to play. Already, I see the master's friend, the fox, is bent over unceremoniously. A lynx thrusts rapidly into him, as his limp genitals hang down like a corpse from the gallows. My stitching once more itches, as I feel it slowly caressing the exposed flesh of the master through his thin layer of undergarment. He begins to scratch. He feels me. Good. Through every act of indecency we perform, every phallic object we take, and every orifice we penetrate, my stitching bond closer and closer to him. I feel perverse as we slowly become one. This isn't what I had in mind, but I can't help myself. We mount a chubby woman dressed as a dragon, our unclean genitals still reeking of our last partner. Now I feel it. Now is the time. Our stitching runs deeper and deeper. I feel parts of the master that I could never see, but knew were there. We bind more and more. I exercise control. A wolf howls as he presumably finishes his breed. I find the excitement impalpable. My claws reach from their tips, slowly digging into the dragon's flesh. She moans and roars. I go deeper and deeper yet. As she begins to let loose a pain scream, many of the others who aren't too addled by drugs or deep in the throes of their primal mate pause to take heed. Stop, she screams as I drag our claws over her, eviscerating her squishy pale flesh. She begins to panic. So too does the master. He struggles, but there is no use. I'm in control now. I feel his strength supporting mine. Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? A deer approaches, curious and concerned. I lose all remaining human rationale. The hunt has begun. I leap forward, sinking my teeth into his neck, tearing clumps of flesh free and swallowing what I can of the gore. He dies almost instantly. I don't have time to waste. As intoxicating as the taste of his supple meat has been, I'm intoxicated by the fear erupting from the crowd. I pounce and leap from target to target, maiming, killing, eating. This corruption of nature has reached its end. I am the leader of the pack that I call. I alone am in control. Bang! My hunt is interrupted by the shot of a gun. Without checking for a wound, I reflexively race for the tree line. Bang! Bang! More shots are fired. I don't stop. I reach the sanctuary of the woods, standing upright, gazing through the darkness of the trees at the devastation I have caused. I howl. A twisted visage of lycanthropic proportions is all that is left of my once master. He will never take control again. It is now he who is the puppet. And this contemptible world will fear our wrath. <laughs>